So we used uh, Wikipron to uh, run two shared tasks. And I wanted to just quickly review what we learned from these shared tasks. These are both shared tasks on graphene to phoneme conversion. So you're given a, a word form and you're asked to predict its pronunciation. Um, we did this in 2020. We did it again in 2021 with a larger team and a lot more work. Uh, I am not running it in 2022, but if somebody wants to take over the reins, I would be glad to serve as a distant technical advisor. Uh, when we do this, we take Wikipron, we exclude words with multiple pronunciations. Some of these represent real variants, but often they're just homographs, which I also have work on if you're interested too. Uh, words are sampled according to the frequency in the, the Vort shots frequency norms, if available, or uniformly if not. The only language which this isn't, wasn't possible to do, I think, was a DGAY, which appears in some of our shared tasks. Um, the data is randomly split into 80% training data, 10% development data, and 10% test data. Splitting is lexeme aware, thanks to a unimorph lookup. Pronunciations are segmented using the segments library. Systems are ranked according to macro average word, word error rate. So because, so speech people love error rates, whereas NLP people love um, accuracy rates. So I'm going to follow the speech uh, procedure and use word error rate. So you get the word where you get you occur a word error if you make a misprediction. That's all. It's really that simple. In 2020, we have uh, 10 basic languages, five so-called surprise languages announced at the end of the task, and you get 4,500 4, examples each. In 2021, in response to comments from the community, we split into three subtasks: a high resource subtask which was all focused on American English, about 40,000 words, and for which all external resources were permitted. So you could even, if you felt like it, do transfer from a different pronunciation dictionary with different uh, conventions. Now, the medium resource subtask had 10,000 words each for 10 languages, and you were permitted to use unimorph paradigms. So you could like look up unimorph uh, lamata, you could look up unimorph features if you so felt like it. We were encouraged to do that, though nobody did, sadly. And in the low resource subtask, you get 10,000 words. So you get like 800 training examples, and you're not permitted to use any external resources other than transfer across those, the other languages, if you so desire. This year, that is 2021, we did quite a few, few new things to improve the task, uh, other than I mentioned, you know, the, uh, so I mentioned the subtask already. Um, we did extensive quality assurance for the data backend from Wikipron, phoneless filtration, Automated script detection, which is that we automatically filter things in, in different scripts. Previously, we had to sort of manually specify that like Serbo-Croat was the language that could be written in Cyrillic and Roman, and Roman both. We no longer needed to specify that fact. We also did some manual post-extraction fixes for English, Bulgarian, Maltese, that is the Latin version. We also have an Arabic Maltese and Welsh. Um, we have a new baseline contributed by the Cluj team that is University of Zurich. And we also built self-automated error analysis tools. More about that in a second. So here's, here was uh, year 2020, no, 15 languages in all. This is just examples of the data. Here's 2021. Here we have uh, some of the, many of the same languages, almost all of them have been repeated, um, but we've added some new languages, like for instance, um, uh, what's new here? Uh, Latvian's new, uh, Romanian's new, Welsh's new, um, et cetera, et cetera. We have, uh, in the first year, we had three different baselines, and ma maintaining all three of them was a lot of work. We really should have, should have kept it simpler. I implemented a pair n-gram model using OpenGRM. This is a sort of a classic generative model. It's a joint model. It doesn't make any sense um, if you're like a model snob, but it works great. And we had two different types of um, neural network models, sort of LSTM encoder decoder and a transformer model. In 2021, we used the second best system from the shared task, an imitation learning based neural transducer implemented in um, Dynet. Um, in the first year, we got 23 submissions, incredible, from nine teams. And the best team achieved a 3% absolute word error reduction. In 2021, we got three, 13 submissions from four teams, so fewer teams and fewer submissions, but still good participation overall. Uh, one team uh, solidly won the uh, high research subtask, the other team solidly won the low research subtask. No team 
managed to beat the baseline in the medium resource subtask, which you get uh, 8,000 training examples. Two methods were used for error analysis. An automated accounting of the most common errors per language across all submissions. This is a method that was developed by Makarov and Clementine. Um, we also uh, automatically sorted errors into errors consistent with a handwritten finite state covering grammar. We call these model deficiencies. These are usually due to inherent ambiguity in the orthography. And finally, errors not consistent with the covering grammar, which we call coverage deficiencies. These usually indicate inconsistencies in the gold data itself, which is to say they're target errors, to use the term from earlier work. Here's the first type of error analysis. These are sort of the most common errors we see. So to like jump into something you might recognize, um, Let's see, there's a bunch of errors in Italian about uh, tense versus lax mid vowels. If you know Italian, Italian doesn't indicate that distinction, though it is phonemic. So, of course, there are a lot of errors in this. The ortho orthography is deficient. Doesn't tell you anything about that sort of thing. Um, for our covering grammar analysis, we were able to get uh, seven languages under covering grammars. Uh, what we see is that the, the word error is only a little bit higher than the model deficiency rate in almost all of these languages. What we take that to mean is that uh, we are performing, uh, we are making very few silly errors in these languages. And we have very few data errors left also in these seven languages. What we do see is that the errors are mostly due to inherent ambiguities in the script. I think I say that over here. Error analysis suggests that much of the residual error is due to inherent orthographic ambiguity, like the fact that Italian doesn't have different characters for tense and lax mid vowels. The other thing we saw in 2021 is we made substantial across the board improvements in performance from 2020 to 2021. Better modeling, more data, and better quality control. In fact, Georgian was at ceiling. Our baseline has perfect performance on the Georgian data set due to quality improvements in the data. Well, Georgian isn't all that hard of a language, so perhaps that's not surprising. Um, there's still a large gap between the higher and lo lower resource subtasks. So the baseline achieves a word error rate of 10.6, but just a word error rate of, of 25.1 in the low resource setting. So model data efficiency is not sufficient to generalize all that well in the low resource setting. We have a long way to go to get highly data efficient approaches. Perhaps data augmentation techniques will help with that. Perhaps distillation techniques will work with that. I don't know. So it's a problem for modeling. Finally, no participants are experimenting with morphology, which makes me sad. I hope somebody does that at some point. I'm going to conclude here. Here's the links to all the things I just talked about. Um, thank you so much. And I hope to uh, have some more questions.